The event timer's wiki page is a long-standing necessity for any Guild Wars 2 player that wants to get to that next meta event on time or string together events one after the other to make a, a meta train. Most people will usually either have it on a second monitor or constantly have to, you know, switch alt tab to it and back to the game. This, my friends, is a thing of the past. Let me introduce to you the event table Blish HUD add-on. I've been using this for years and I don't think I could ever go back now. Um, it lets you overlay whatever events you want directly on top of your game and you can also hover over um, certain events to see more information about them like how long until they start and what time it'll be as well as clicking on them to instantly copy the waypoint to your clipboard and then you can go and paste that into your chat and click that. Today I'm going to show you how to set it up as well as how to do some more advanced things with it like making it instantly waypoint you when you click on an event instead of copying the link and setting up like a mini event timer that only shows you the events that in the map that you're currently on which is what I have over here on my mini map I've just got that there all the time which is pretty handy if you don't want to have a big one on screen all the time or have to toggle it on and off all the time Alright, so first thing you need to do is install BlishHUD if you haven't already. It's super simple. You just need to head to BlishHUD.com and follow the instructions. I do have a video that goes into more detail about BlishHUD if you want more information about that. Link will be in the description. But once you've got BlishHUD installed, just open it up and head over to the module repo tab and just find or search for event table. Um, don't get it mixed up with this events and metas observer, that's a different one. So event table, just go ahead and click install, I've already got it installed. And then once it's installed, go to manage modules, find it in the list of modules that you have installed, event table, and then click enable module, mine's already enabled. Once you've done that, it's all ready to go, so we can then open settings and uh, get it all set up how we like it. By default, you might have a big mess um, that just shows every event uh, in the game. I like to simplify it a little bit so it's only showing the ones that I really need. Um, so you can have a look through the general settings and make sure these are all how you like them. Um, but what we're going to look at is event areas. So basically you can have different sets of um, events, event tables. You can have like multiple event tables. So this is my main one that I've got here. And I've got this one key bound to Alt E um, so I can toggle that on and off which is this one here, the big one, what I call it. And then current map here is this one here. So if I go into current map and then disable that one, you'll see the, the one on my mini map here disappears. So these are two separate event tables that I have set up. Um, this big one is the main one that I use. So if we have a look at this one, um, just select it and then you can go manage events and this is where you can select what events show up here. So if I were to add like the server reset then you'll see it as the server reset uh, sort of category in the table and then if you unclick that it will remove that so I've just got basically all of the different events that I want to have on there selected and then all the ones that I wanted to hide are deselected and then in here you can also do all sorts of settings for the table so for me I've got uh, an enabled keybind um, so that when I press that key bind it toggles it on and off because I don't want this on my screen all the time. You can uh, go through the location and size, make sure it's uh, exactly where you want. You can even adjust like the width and height of the individual boxes, how opac the, the opacity of it and all these sorts of things. You can go into quite a lot of detail here. Um, I'll let you experiment with this on your own. So let's create a new one um, for the tutorial. To create a new table, just click add and then give it a name. Test table. Save. So this is what you might have um, by default when you first load it up. This is just the default one. All events, very bright. And um, what I like to do is first I'll manage the events and I'll um, uncheck all of the ones that I don't want selected. So if I just uncheck all then I can go in and, and select whichever individual events that I want to show up. Or you can go by map. Check all of these on one certain map. 
So now I've got basically just like Leyla Anomaly and all of the core world bosses showing up. And we'll just, uh, we'll leave it at that for now. And then you can go in and make, make it show up wherever you want. The event uh, width, the height, so you can make it all skinny or very large. You can choose to draw borders or not. You can do a, a bunch of stuff in here. Um, but how do we make one like this that only shows the current map? Um, so if I were to move to a different map, this would change to only show the map that I'm currently in. Basically, um, to do that, we want to go to behavior in here, behaviors. And then in the behaviors section, down the bottom of that section, we've got limit to current map. So if we check that, it will hide anything on that table that is not the current map. So since I didn't have um, Auric Basin selected, it's just hidden all of it. If we manage events again, we'll go to Auric Basin. And we'll check all of these. So now from all of the events that I've got in there, it will only show the ones that on the map that I'm currently in. So what you would actually want to do is go and check check all of the events and then it only shows the ones that are to do with the current map that you're on or that have no map and then to hide the ones that have no map like just the day and night cycle and server reset stuff like that that I don't care about you unselect this one allow from unspecified maps if you deselect that now it will only show the exact map that you're currently in so if I move to a different map will start showing me that and then all I did was just uh, go to you know location and size make it all small and uh, put it right above or on top of my mini map here and this one just stays there all the time so it's sort of just uh, a little reminder if I'm in a map and I'm not paying attention I can just quickly look up there and see when the next meta event is starting it's pretty handy Another thing you can do is actually change it so that instead of copying the nearest waypoint when you click on one of these, you can actually automatically teleport you to that waypoint itself. All you need to do is in the behaviors section right at the top, the left click action, uh, if you change this from copy waypoint to navigate to waypoint, then instead of just copying the relevant waypoint when you click on an event, it'll actually do this crazy thing and it'll actually, like I'm not touching anything right now, this is happening all automatically. It'll navigate to the waypoint, select it. I do have to manually click this yes button if I want to confirm, um, which I'm not going to do. But you can even make it not do that as well. If you um, if you select this checkbox here, accept the waypoint prompt, um, it'll actually even automatically select yes. So it's fully a full automatic it is like, I, f I found it to be like 90% reliable. If you move your mouse too much, it can stop it from working, but um, that is an option that you have. Another thing that you can do with this module is reminders. This is not something that I use personally, just because uh, I don't want, it's just a bit too much clutter for me and I don't really use the reminders, but you can set up reminders to ping a little notification when like a certain event is coming up. Um, so if that sounds handy for you, that's something that you can do here as well. Uh, and that'll just about do it. I've got another video like this one on the pathing module for Blishard, which is arguably one of the most useful modules that you can get. So if you still haven't set that one up, take a gander at that video. Uh, if you liked this video, you know what to do. And uh, get the hell out of here. You actually stink.